Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So in this video, we are going to talk about that how to reverse a number, a pure positive integer number is given, and then we have to reverse. So for example, that if I'm writing that what is the reverse of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then it should give me 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There are multiple ways that you can just uh, reverse a function. You can convert that into a string and then you can reverse a string with the loop. But at the time of interview, they will ask you without converting into a string. It means with the numbers, you have to reverse, right? So you have to do some basic calculation here. So first of all, that simple thing, if you notice one thing here that what is the reverse of 1, 2, 3, the reverse of 1, 2, 3 will be 3, 2, 1. It means we have to keep capturing the last digit let's see five and then keep it here. Then we have to take four. Then we have to keep it here. Then we have to three, then two, and then when. So we have to arrange in this particular order. It means we have to keep fetching the last digit from the number, right? So for example, let's see if I really want to fetch one, two, three. So first what I'll do that, okay, I'll fetch three. So what is the remaining part? Then one, two, then I'll fetch, okay, two from here. Then what is the remaining part? One like this. And then I'll combine them together like three, two, one here like this. So how to do this? So for this, how will you fetch the last uh, digit? So can I say that, okay, if I, let's see, for example, for one, two, three, if I really want to fetch three, if I divide one, two, three by a uh, 10, what will you get here? So you will be getting 12.3 mathematically, but I'll do one thing. I'll just get its 12 value or 0.3 value. I just simple remove it. So I'll just simple get the uh, floor value here. So I'll just pick one, two from here. Right. So I'll keep dividing by 10 like this. Right. So this is how we will start getting. Then again, let's see whatever the 12 that I'm getting. Again, I'm writing 12 divided by 10. So in that case, I'll be getting 1.2. I'll remove 0.2 from here and then I'll be getting 1 from here. So I'll just keep fetching the values like that. It means last digit value, we have to fetch it here. Right. So let's see how to do this. So my target is that from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2 or any number to a reverse number. So I'll start creating a function. So at the time of interview also, you have to start creating a function here. Let's see, I'm writing a reverse number, something like this. Okay, reverse a number. And this says that you have to give me a number. So I'm giving a number here. So this is a function that I'll be calling. But you think about if I'm giving, let's see, number is one. Number is, uh, let's see, two. What is the reverse of one and two? The reverse of one and two will be one only. And for two also will be two. So can I say, if you are passing number between zero to nine, the reverse of that number will be the single digit, the same number only, right? We can say that it will be the same number. So can I put this particular condition that why to write unnecessary logic or any division or any kind of mathematical logic I don't, don't want to write. So can I say, if you are giving me the number between zero to nine, I'm going to reverse or sorry, I'm going to return the same number. So can I put one condition here that if your number is what, whatever the number that you are passing is greater than or equal to zero and, and the number is what the number is actually less than or equal to nine. So between zero to nine, if you are giving me anything, I'm going to return the same number to you. That's it. So this is the first check that we have to write here. Perfect. Then I'll do one thing that I'm going to create one a variable, let's see one let variable that I'm going to create, which is a reverse number. Whatever the reverse number will be there, I'm going to store the reverse number here. So let's see I'm initializing with zero initially, reverse number here. Then I'm writing one simple while loop here that inside the while loop that I'm writing that if the number is not equal to zero, I'll tell you why I'm writing this. So let's write the logic first and then I'm writing a simple condition here that okay, number is not equal to zero. I'm writing that is equal to what, whatever the reverse number initially, let's see it is zero. And then you multiply this by 10. I'll tell you why. Okay. Let me write this entire logic first and then I'll keep getting what then I'll keep getting the remainder also from that particular number. So whatever the number that you are writing, and then you have to write modulus a 10 here. Modulus means give me the remainder of that. Perfect. So in that case, whatever the number that you are giving to me number divided by 10. But see this in JavaScript, if you divide any number, let's see this one, <clears throat> and then I'm using it somewhere over here. Let's see in the JavaScript, I'm getting this one, five, four, three, two point one. But I really want to ignore point one. I just want to capture 
only 5432, then in that case, you can use this particular method that math dot a flow method and then you just simple pass what let's see 5 4 3 2 1 divided by 10 then in that case it's actually removing me point 1 from here and it's giving me 5 4 3 2 here so can i say instead of writing number by 10 that i'm saying that okay fine i'm using the math class and then i'm using this particular floor method and then i'm passing this calculation here like this and once this calculation is done after the while loop i'll say that okay fine that i'm going to return what I'm going to return this particular reverse number that you have already captured here, right? Okay, now see the logic, how exactly it works. So for example, the number is, let's write it here. The number is we are passing here, one, two, three, four. Or well, let's see, start with a small number, one, two, three. This condition is not satisfied, of course, because number is uh, greater than or equal to zero, fine, but it is actually uh, less than or equal to nine. No condition is not satisfied, so it will not come inside this particular if condition. Then the reverse number is initially zero. Whatever the number that you are passing, one, two, three, is not equal to zero, yeah, condition is satisfied, so it will come inside the while loop. And then it will go and check that what is the reverse number initially. So let's write the calculation here. The reverse number is actually zero. And then multiply by 10. And then I'm saying that plus whatever the number that you are getting, what? One, two, three. Sorry, let me write it here. That one, two, three, give me the remainder with 10. So the, this is called modulus operator. Modulus operator means if a number is totally divisible by the specific number, that will give you zero. For example, let's see if you come back here. If I ask you that, okay, four is modulus two. Four is totally divisible by two, yes, because two multiplied by two is equal to four, which is giving me zero. But if I'm is not totally divisible by, sorry, five is not totally divisible by two, then in that case, it will give you one over here. If I ask you that, okay, fine, give me 10 modulus three. So three multiplied by three is equal to what? Nine and 10 minus nine is equal to one. It is giving to me. So same thing. If I ask you that one, two, three is divisible by 10. No, because if you see 10 multiplied by 12, which is giving you 120 and 123 minus 120 is equal to three here like this. So you, we used to do this thing. If you remember that in our uh, school time that we have to fetch the remainder value so it's for example let's see if i ask you that we used to create this particular table and then five is totally divisible by two no so what is the remainder for that so we will pick the nearest value two multiplied by two is equal to what a four and five minus four is equal to what one here same thing if i ask you that okay 10 is a divisible by two what is the remainder for that so i'll just multiply by two with five so five multiplied by two is equal to 10 10 minus 10 is equal to zero so remainder is zero here but if I ask you the same thing that, okay, fine, give me a one, two, three is actually divisible by 10 or not. So what is the nearest value I'll be getting if I multiply? So can I say that if I multiply by 12, so nearest value I'm getting 120 and 123 minus 120 is equal to what is equal to three here. So in that case, the remainder will be three here. Simple. Okay. So with this calculation, we will proceed now. So what exactly this calculation will give me so 0 multiplied by 10 means 0 and 123 modulus 10 it means give me the remainder so can i say that okay i'm getting the remainder as a 3 here like this right i got the remainder here and then i'm writing that number is equal to math dot floor and divide that particular number by 10 so in that case the last digit is what can i say 123 here we are doing a pure 123 divided by 10 so this will give you 12.3, but just because of this floor method, it will give me what? It will give me 12 here. So I have removed three from here. Now the actual number value is equal to 12 now. Again, it will go here. What is the now current value of number? The current value of number is 12 now. Then again, it will go and check here. What is the current value of reverse? Initially reverse, we have already stored this entire expression. We have stored that is three, which is given to reverse number. It was three initially. Right, so I'll do one thing. Let me remove this calculation. I'll start from here. So in saying that, okay, reverse number initially, it was now, uh, after the first iteration, it was three multiplied by 10. Then again, I'm writing plus, and then I'm putting a bracket here and saying numbered modulus 10. What is the number? 12 modulus 10. So in that case, what will you get here? So in that case, see, I'm getting 30 plus 12 is totally divisible by 10. No. So what is the remainder for that? It will give you two. So what is the output we are getting? 32 here. 
So we have fetched what? In the reverse number, we have stored now 32. So I'll write, okay, now the latest value of current value of reverse number is 32. What is the number is going on here at line number 12? So number is again 12 divided by what? Again, it will be 12 divided by 10. So it will give you 1.2. 0.2 will be removed. And then it will give you 1. Again, it will come back here. Number is 1. 1 is not equal to 0. Yes, condition is again satisfied. The, again, it will come back here. Reverse is what? Reverse number uh, in each, early it was 32. Again, multiply by 10. Then I'm saying plus. And then I'm writing that 1 modulus 10. So in that case, what will be the output? This will give you 320 and then 1 modulus 10 will give you 1. So you can check it here once again. See this if I'm writing here that what is 1 is modulus by 10 is giving you 1 here. So in that case, again, come back here, it will give you 1. So what is the output of reverse number now? 321. Then again, it will come back here. What is the number? Number is 1 divided by 10, which is giving me what? 0 0.1. But math.floor will remove the 0 0.1 from here and then we are getting what? We are getting 0 here. So again, it will come back and 0 is not equal to 0. Condition is not satisfied. It will come out of this particular while loop. And then it will just reverse the number, whatever the current reverse number is, what, 321 will be given back to me. Right. So the same formula will work for any number here. So now I'll do one thing. I'll start calling this particular function. So let's call this whatever the function name. It is reverse number. And then I'll start writing my test cases here that, okay, reverse number, let's see supply one here first. And whatever the number that we are getting, let me just print it in the console also that console.log and reverse number we are printing it here. So I'm passing one. One will be given to this guy and putting this condition because I don't want to unnecessary execute a while loop here and then write extra you know logic for this if the single digit that you are passing. So I'm simple passing between 0 to 9. If you're giving to me, I'm going to give you the same number here. So simple. If you're giving me one, I'm going to give you the number same one here. So if I run this program, so output of reverse one will be one only. So let's run it here. And here you can see on the console that uh, the one is coming here. Same thing if I'm passing that see some number nine. So that is number nine is also the single digit. So nine is also we are getting nine only. Okay, see that we are getting nine here. But if I'm saying that, okay, no, I'm passing one, two, three. 1, 2, 3 here. In that case, also the 1, 2, 3 will give you 3, 2, 1. It will reverse it according to our logic. So you can say 3, 2, 1. If I'm saying, okay, I'm going to give you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's pass 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here and then run it again. So output is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So whatever the number that you are passing, if you're passing some long number also, including 0. So let's see, is it really reversing the number or not? So let's run it again. So yes, it is actually reversing the number. Remember one thing, if once we reverse it, it will not hold zero because it does not make any sense that number, it will never start with zero. So there is not number like zero one, right? So zero one is like an octal number. This is not a decimal number. So all the decimal number will never start with the zero. So that's why zero will automatically truncate it or remove from here. But let's see if I'm writing one here, then it should give me one zero nine something here. So let's run it again. And then you can say that, yeah, 109, something here, we are getting it, right? So this is a simple logic that we have to write and simple, make sure that, okay, at the time of interview, you are putting this particular condition also. And then the simple logic, only two lines of logic, first multiply by 10 and modulus 10. So this line will give me what this line will give me whatever the output is coming and then we will arrange and then we will fetch the the last digit value and then keep appending here and this line will give me what this line will remove the last digit from there so that's what we are doing it like this perfect i hope this is clear